is just starting to gain momentum in Australia. These mullet at the Bribey Island Research Station on Moreton Bay are in the vanguard of the search for an Australian version of what is common practice in the Middle East and Asia. I think you, it's fair to say that it hasn't been explored to, to, to the, the fullest uh, capacity we, we, we could. And it's probably a cultural thing. Um, certainly in Asia there has been a long culture, a long tradition of using um, different species of fish and prawns and, and algae to clean water. In fact, to see water, nutrient-rich water, as a resource, not as a problem. So there's a cultural difference. And uh, today, though, we're seeing the beginnings, our work is very young here, the beginnings of, of interest and in research and development to really to uh, repeat, if you like, or to replicate the Asian experience in Australia, but using our native species. Indeed, the researchers on Bribey Island have embarked on something of a search and employ mission amongst Australia's vast variety of aquatic life. Dr Wayne Nibb is leading the hunt. And even within the species that we know about, hardly any of them have been systematically evaluated for their efficiency as bioremediators. So I, I see this as a great uh, story of discovery, of biodiscovery, and we've just started on this, on this journey. So I would be betting that we will find native species uh, as good as or better than the carp and tilapia alternatives um, before we will find uh, acceptance in the community to import carp and tilapia for these bioremediation purposes. So far the attention has centred on the mullet, a scavenger that munches through what scientists would politely call the lowest trophic levels in the food chain. Another way of putting it is, they can do quite nicely in sewage treatment plants. Rabbit fish have been studied for their algal appetite. But perhaps the greatest advance has been made with banana prawns cleaning up intensive aquaculture operations. Banana prawns are a little bit different to the commonly farmed tiger prawn in that they are a little more omnivorous. They, um, they eat algae um, and detritus basically, so these prawns go onto farms and they go into unfed ponds uh, that have the accumulation of, of feces and uneaten food um, and also um, the stimulation of, of algal growth from this, uh, this product um, and they're able to, just through their normal feeding behaviour, uh, remove this and, and turn it into prawn flesh. The Bribey Island researchers accidentally stumbled onto the banana prawn's other job as the scullion of the crustacean world while assessing its increasing popularity in aquaculture. With waste from prawn farms currently limiting their expansion, developing a dual purpose prawn may give the nascent industry a massive kick along. We're looking um, at a very major expansion of, of aquaculture in Australia. Last year we had a $70 million um, uh, prawn harvest and we can see that that can easily go to a billion dollar harvest in Queensland alone if we can find the right species or conduct sustainable uh, prawn aquaculture and find the right species to uh, deal with the, the wastewater from these systems. So the economic benefit, I think that we, we can say is a billion dollar economic benefit. If we can find the species and technologies to use this waste, then we've released significant industry development for Queensland, and yes, I, I, I can put a price figure on that of around a billion dollars. If our technologies are profitable, then we feel that the dollar incentive will drive this f further and faster than the regulatory pressures. But it's not just the farmed prawn detritus that's excited the interest of the Bribey Island team. They're trialling mullet in the local sewage treatment plant to strip out nutrients that would normally make their way out into the environmentally sensitive Moreton Bay. I guess the focus of uh, our attention is Moreton Bay in southeast Queensland. Uh, we have offshore in Moreton Island and Stradbroke Island, uh, near pristine uh, systems. We have seagrass beds, we have dugongs. Um, we, we have uh, an increasing concern that cumulatively uh, terrestrial sources of nitrogen into the bay are converting it from being a nutrient poor system into a nutrient rich system 
And if this occurs, then we'll change the ecology of the bay. And the Caboolture Shire Council is impressed with the mullet's work. When the mullet were first released in the clarifier, they um, ate certain parts of the algae. You could see where they'd eaten patches out of it. Um, if there'd been a, a greater number of fish, we seem to think that they would have been able to clean the whole area. And the mullet seemed to do really well. The nutrients in wastewater from a town or a city has some similarities with the nutrients we would uh, see in water from aquaculture discharge. So our challenge is to see whether our technologies uh, that we're developing for uh, aquaculture purposes can be transferred and, and extended uh, for domestic wastewater discharge. There are additional challenges here, obviously. Uh, there are challenges, for example, of uh, bacterial counts. Uh, one thing we are very keen to see is whether fish can actually reduce viral and bacterial counts from domestic wastewater. We have uh, an indication that this is so from work in Asia. The work is similar to a project that's been running in the Burdekin using fish to tidy up waste from the sugar industry upstream from the Great Barrier Reef. Even at the end of the system we may imagine having barramundi feeding on mullet that have cleaned waterways in the Burdekin Canal. And of course that would interest uh, our recreation fishermen. They would certainly like to think of their barramundi being fed from our mullets uh, that are in turn keeping uh, improving the water quality in the Burdekin. However, there are other marketing opportunities, even for a fish as charismatically challenged as a mullet raised on waste. It could become a champion of the nation's balance of payments as an import replacement, particularly given the heated debate in quarantine circles about the quality of imported trash fish. Australia, surprisingly, imports a whole lot of fish to turn into pet food to then re-export to Asian markets. And, and I certainly believe that there is an opportunity for... Uh, Australian primary producers to be producing a uh, high volume, low value waste fish or, or trash fish stream to replace the imports and I think that, that there's an environmental good news story that in, or, every way you look at it. The head of Fisheries Victoria, Richard McLaughlin, has a far more open mind about the potential for carp as an agent for environmental good than many in Australia. There is potential to use carp as a species, for example, a very tough species capable of utilising very low grade nutrients uh, to clean up uh, wastewaters, particularly in sewage ponds, um, to utilise then for pet food and in the dairy wastewater uh, project that was about can we use similar species, uh, carp and other native species, uh, to clean up the protein waste that, that uh, occur in dairy wastes. Now a lot of people might feel alarmed at the prospect of actually, um, I suppose, introducing more carp into the uh into Australia? Well that's exactly right. The risk assessment processes around uh, utilisation of carp in Australia uh, haven't been well dealt with and, and there's a whole bunch of policy issues that would have to be dealt with. Carp's been used uh, as a trial animal only but there's potentially a number of native species that could, could do the job as well. Back in Israel the carp are going about their job. Dr Sagi isn't necessarily advocating that the system used here could be dropped directly into Australian waters, but he says it shouldn't be too difficult to develop alternative systems. I'm not in position to give lesson to the Australian, but uh, I think that uh, this system could be adopted in, other, adopted in other places in the world, especially in those places that are suffering from... Uh, blue-green algae blue, which is a very serious problem in Australia. So uh, using this method with the Australian modification, it could be very, very helpful in controlling the blue-green algae, algae bloom in the potable water uh, dams and also in irrigation dams. And these days, when businesses are looking at the so-called triple bottom line of environmental, social and financial returns, these finned vacuum cleaners may just about fit the bill for cleaning up Australia's water supplies. Yeah.